something to change where he wasn't before. Um, him and his wife are becoming closer. Um, you know, and it's funny because it's like a lot of the guys I meet with, they would never – you know, I work in a therapist's office and they, you could just feel the discomfort of just walking to a therapist's office for the first time, <laughs> even though what I do is very different from what a therapist does. But, um, yo, this is Christian D. Evans with Journey with Christian D. Evans podcast. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to our amazing podcast. This is where we reveal the top 1% of business concepts and systems and processes to scale eight and nine figure businesses. We interview top level eight and nine figure CEOs, business owners, and amazing TEDx speakers like David Meltzer. We got Nick Cavuto, Pascal Bachman, and so many others. And if you feel like this resonates with you, please share this with your friend, your family, and make sure you impact them as well because we're trying to spread the message on those that do not know how to scale eight nine figure businesses and talking higher level business concepts so guys remember enjoy the episode and be uncommon if you can cheers thank you so much for tuning in to journey with christian d evans podcast i'm your host christian d evans men are forged that is the individual that we have on today. He's the CEO and founder of menareforged.com. Now, what is that? Well, we all struggle throughout life. And this individual, this coach, this podcaster, this certified thought leader is someone that we wanted to have on because we see this huge epidemic in today's society and the 20s, the 30-year-olds, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a CEO, whether you're a top-level executive, we want to have this individual on. He has, and I just want to share, his work with hundreds of emerging leaders in the U.S. and abroad. He has spent over 10 years managing, developing young leaders at organizations like the Center for Executive Leadership, J.H. Ranch, and Heaven in Business in California. He's a growing thought leader and expert in how to grow men to thrive in culture, career, and personal leadership. He has over 1,500 hours of coaching and mentoring. He's developed a lifelong message into his coaching session and content. He's the host of the fast-growing podcast, Men Are Forged, a podcast for men feeling restless and discontent in their life and career. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my friend, the one and only Cartwright Morris. How you doing, my man? Man, I'm great. Uh, it's really looking forward to this. Thank you, Christian. Hey, I'm really looking forward to it as well because, again, you know, I, I see this huge epidemic uh, in today's society, right, um, uh, regarding men. Um, and I wanted to have you on because, you know, a lot of men are young, vibrant, whether it's career, whether it's business, whether it's the structure. You know, um, I just want to get kind of a glimpse with your clients, the people that you've coached that have dealt with the struggle and pain and, and discontent. What have you noticed? What, why do you think they are struggling with that? What do you see in this industry right now, man? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because I, I overall, I think most of these young men, they have been told, uh, you know, I mean, they're really living this like subconscious lifestyle of what they think they're supposed to do, right? And they just kind of go along to get along. And there's not a lot of honesty in that, that there's not a lot of self-reflection. And I think they've been told that, you know, if you do X, these list of things, then you will be successful. You'll have money, you'll have a good career and you'll feel stable in your life and job. And it's like, we kind of put that on the altar right there is, you know, career success, success and money and think that's the end all be all. What I'm finding is even, even young men who find that early on are still getting that place of like, is this it? Is this what I've been told I'm supposed to like, be reaching for and they're finding out wanting more of a comprehensive a holistic view on life on discovering the things that really matter to them and really pursuing that and most of them just don't know how because they've just been told this is this is the path you're supposed to take it's very narrow it's kind of boring um i myself i you know i thought my life was supposed to be figured out at 25 <laughs> and thankfully it didn't happen <laughs> so and here i am so well, you, you mentioned something before our podcast, and I want to bring this up because, mm -hmm. you know, purpose, right? And where, why am I here? What am I doing? And a lot of those questions, you know, are developed at a very young age. And sometimes maybe, you know, we think we know we got our, our purpose mm -hmm. is driven from more of the career. And we're like, hey, I know. And then all of a sudden, maybe something happens where you lose that job. And then all of a sudden, your identity or your self-esteem or your self-image is, mm -hmm. is kind of, you know, uh, in question. And so yeah. I'd like to ask you, what, 
when you're mentoring these men, these young men uh, regarding purpose and, you know, why am I here? Um, just like to get your perspective. Uh, what do you tell them and, and how do you help them kind of facilitate the right answer in their life? Well, yeah, I mean, that's um, a lot of that is really unpacking is kind of starting with what most of us men aren't willing to unpack. And that is really understanding our story, understanding and really at like the core of that is our pain, you know, how to, and what, how do we define that? I, I think, you know, well, one, we avoid it because I think we're told that pain is weakness, lack, and uh, therefore, yeah, I won't, if I, if I am perceived as that, then there, there's something less than about me. And therefore, I'm not going to be, people won't think I have it all together, right? That kind of language. Um, but when we really look at pain, and I, and I like to find pain for men specifically is in three areas, really, it's, it's failure. Um, it's clearly, yeah, trauma in our life, whether that's big T trauma or little T trauma. And then, of course, the, the third thing that is just complexity, that life is complex. People are complex. It's just not, life is not linear. Um, I wish someone that told me that way back, you know, when I was 14, 15, stepping into manhood and trying to figure it out of just like, it's not, it's not a straightforward, it's very nuanced, very complex. It's not, you know, A plus B equals C. It, and um, I'm really finding that, man, men, like we, we've been externally motivated because we, we want the perfect picture and we're not willing to really dig deep into our story of what makes us us what are those things that happen that we wish happened and didn't and like what did we learn from it and we're not willing to kind of dig and figure out what did I actually learn from these hard times in my life and it actually starts shaping more of our purpose and it shapes even in the career um you know if I had the career I wanted at 25 I, you know I, I would be in a completely different avenue and not really knowing myself, not really understanding me and being a place where I'm thriving and I'm excited about the day, nor ought to be influencing the people that I really want to influence. So. Well, what's interesting is, I, and I appreciate you bringing this up because this is mm -hmm. one of the things that I struggle with for many, many years is this, this false of expectation. And let me explain mm -hmm. when I remember numerous times I would put these expectations on in my life. I have to perform at this, this, and this. I have to be doing this, this, and this in order to you know, be that man that I know that I can become. And what was happening was sometimes that these, these expectations, I wasn't completing those or doing those in, a, in, the, in the time period that I wanted to. Right. I wasn't a you know, millionaire at 25. I wasn't this, whatever, you know. And the thing is, is what I started realizing was, you know, it, it was almost a, a, a debilitating belief and thought process because then all of a sudden I was just being like a, you know, a toilet flushing down the pipe. And I was like not actually being able to perform at the highest level because it was almost this identity, self esteem, you know self-image issue and self-confidence right yeah. and you know when you don't have that purpose and there's that false expectation and you're not performing it mm -hmm. like whatever and there's like oh i'm not i'm not where i should be and you get this almost this this, this frustration then it's almost like a like i said a, a circle um what, i just want to get your thoughts on that is that what you see as well and yeah i mean comparison is can be such a deadly enemy i mean when we live our lives constantly looking to the right and the left of where we think we should be compared to our friends and peers and people around us. It's just, it, it's just only leads to anxiety, um, disappointment. And, and like I said, it's just an act like you, like you're saying the expectation, the external motivation eventually runs out. It's generally a recipe. That's just like it, you're, you're, it's an endless cycle. You're going to like a hamster versus actually that, like we're going back to that purpose, that internal driver that I'm like, is unique to me in finding that it's um it's can be a hard journey like a lot of guys i meet with they, they feel this way i know i feel it in my journey is it feels like two steps forward one step back every time you know because <laughs> it's painful to really self-reflect open up engage in your life and really figure out like what is unique to me and, and you have to be willing to fail i think there's that's a big part of it is when we think when we put these expectations of who we're supposed to be failure is not part of the equation and failure is so valuable anyone we look up to admire and we look and we say that is a guy who has got is successful building something great who's 
very real and authentic, two feet in and what he's doing, they generally failed and they embraced it. And they learned from it, understood it, became better. And but for some reason, when we create these expectations, like we, we don't we, we put failure as this like awful plague or something that we can't touch or be around when really like that's the good stuff. That's what you actually grow up and learn and mature and become the man that you really want to be. So and, and speaking of this, see, it's, it's actually very interesting. I want to kind of be um, I'd like to get your story as well. But see, I remember when I was addicted to pornography and I was struggling through that. Mm -hmm. I remember that it was just like when I was isolated, I thought it was only me. This has only happened to me and this and that. It was kind of selfish. And then when I started getting into like 180 and other recovery groups, I started realizing, oh, no, it's everybody's struggled with this. Everybody's mm -hmm. done this. Oh, and in fact, there's war situations. Right. And what that does is it gives me a nice perspective. And like you, I think you your whole purpose is like you're living life together, right? It's like, hey, you yeah. know, we're all going through this together. And, yeah. you know, I like to kind of ask you, you know, because you weren't born this way, kind of help us understand, like, where did this come from? At what point in your life did you say, okay, this is enough. I got to find this solution. I got to find my yeah. purpose. If you could just share it with our audience a little bit, your story, man. Yeah. I mean, I think really, like I said, early days, pre-manhood, really stepping into that high school where, you know, it, I was constantly comparing myself. I had this low grade anxiety because I wasn't the good enough athlete that I thought I should be. I wasn't a good enough student. Um, didn't, you know, obviously not as successful with girls, right? That's kind of the big three, right? In the high school man's life. And you, you create these narratives in your head, right? That I'm, that I'm very much va like valued low. I'm only qualified for the very minimal, and that goes into my college days, um, you know, really making choices, terrified of failure because of this, the rejection I may have felt or the failure I experienced and the bad feeling that you have when you experience those, the shameful um, of not measuring up to culture's expectations, parents' expectations, or even your own. And, and you kind of um, constantly live with this low anxiety anxiety trying to move around it you know I changed majors like three or four times um kind of decided that I was going to be like a I loved football and football kind of became like this idol to me of being this successful high school player and then when that really didn't uh lit like come to fruition like I wanted it to I I felt like I lived a lot of years trying to redeem that and you're like, like you're trying to, when you're trying to redeem your own story in a way where you're just, uh, yeah, trying to relive something instead of actually looking at what you can learn from it, um, you know, and so I pursued being a football coach, you know, and what that looked like and um, doors just kept closing and I kept thinking this, I'm, this is what I'm supposed to do because this is what my contribution to society and people are going to give me a pat on the back and say, hey, you're doing something really good. When really it didn't fit my personality, it didn't fit where I wanted to go, the people I wanted to influence, uh, my gifts and skills. And, and so I really like um, having a really like um, low moment, you know, in my mid 20s of like having, you know, having a decent job where I was paying everything I could pay for, you know, roof, car, you know, all the things you need and like, modern life and you come to this revelation of like what am I doing I am miserable I should have you know I should be happy I should be grateful for all the things that I have and there was this like moment of like man but this is not alive I'm not living and you know I you know I've done things that you know most guys people would think in your 20s is like really cool and exciting but it wasn't it was so empty and so really like having those low moments of like I want to feel alive and that's when I like quit my job moved out to a place in California you know called the JH Ranch you mentioned in my bio and I was working for free I was 26 with a bunch of 19 and 20 year olds like the old guy and I was in maintenance just on this beautiful ranch in Northern California. And I was happy as I could be because I'd finally like stopped trying. Like, I was just like, here's me, this is it. And I'm just going to figure out who I am and what I want to do by just being present and finding a place where I can come alive and actually feel like a human being 
and stop trying to live up to some nonsense that I created in my head that I'm trying to correct from my past, but really just like, all right, I'm going to go figure out who I am and yeah, what I want to do. So that was kind of, you know, there's like a 10 year period in there. So, yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And, and it's interesting mm-hmm. sometimes how <clears throat> life just gets you to that point. Mm-hmm. And you have to make that internal decision. And mm-hmm. it was at that ranch that allowed you to say, you know what, I'm done now. After that, that mm-hmm. is the, that's where the journey really starts. Mm-hmm. And yep. so who was, who was with you? Who, who did you align yourself with? Maybe a mentor that helped you um, mm-hmm. to stay focused, to stay energized, to say, hey, this is the right path. Was there anybody that came alongside you or just kind of walk us through that part of the journey? That's where you really said, okay, you know, I made that t- decision. Now what? Yeah, so first, I mean, it really started with just a community of peers that believed in me. You know, one of the narratives I thought, grow, you know, in high school and college is that, like I was just a, a not very bright. I was just a dumb, couldn't articulate, stand in front of crowd, talk, do something like this. Right. You know, and I think it was a lot of it was, you know, a lot of my friends went, went off to college in high school, were, got scholarships and were like really brilliant kids. So I assumed that. And, you know, and then when I got around at JH, I was just got around a group of peers that people like didn't know that past about me. And they were like, what are you talking about? Like, you're a very bright, like intellectually intelligent person and, and, and realizing like intelligence is so much beyond just book smart. Right. And so that was kind of a, a valuable thing of just being around people just believed in me. Uh, beyond just this stereotype I created myself. The only contribution I had in a group was being the, the funny, goofy guy. And then transitioning into a place of like, no, I have a lot to add to a community and, and getting that like feedback. And, you know, I could bring the fun, the goofy too as well. But uh, I think that started. And, and then really, yeah, I had a mentor, you know, three years in after this kind of this journey and staying out in California and meeting people, um, a guy named Andy Mason, who really like, he brought me in as like kind of as an intern into his, uh, his business. And it was kind of like, yeah, I'm going to teach you what, what freedom really looks like you know, and it was, it was so interesting because I was like, I was a person who was, all right, for me to feel good about myself, especially in a working environment, give me the list of things to do to, to, to live up to your expectations so that I feel confident myself. And he's like, no, this is the, this is the goal we're trying to go after. Now help me do that. But it's like, no, 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 no. Tell me what to do. Just t- give me a list. Give me a list. I wasn't mature enough to actually make those powerful choices within that to go. And it was hard. I, like I had to like, wait, you, you want me to go work by myself and, and ask questions and, and I have the choice to work at, at a, don't have to work at a certain time. And it was just like, this whole other perspective that was really hard at first because I felt so much tension in me of like, I, I don't feel successful because I don't know, you know, I don't have the list. I don't have the the expectations, but he was like, no, I trust you. Just go for it. I'm like, what does that mean? (laughs) But I was so thankful because I needed that. I needed that like hard pressing. And he put me in a team where they, they gave me good feedback they really and told me to like, you just got to engage. You got to be present. You got to be here. You got to be willing to go through it and, and not like, if you don't have, like, if you don't know what to do, ask, I think as some men, it's like, we, we got to feel like we're self-reliant, right? We got to feel like we got it all figured out. So to ask questions when a group of a team, but that's the point and how valuable collaboration is with the team and finding that as a valuable um, thing. Cause I, I think, I, yeah, it's just interesting. I think I feel like I've only been in work environments where if you ask questions, there was something wrong with you. <laughs> and wow, I love this yeah. because see, you know, and I really appreciate that authenticity because see, let's kind of unpack that a little bit because mm-hmm. there, there was someone that kind of was your mentor that took you under, the, took you under their wing and obviously kind of slapped you upside the head a little bit and mm-hmm. you felt uncomfortable, but that's the growth. And I'd like to dive into that a little bit further. What other, you know, growing 
things happened during that time? Do you, was it something that he said or were some things that he, he, he allowed you to sit in discomfort a little bit for you to yeah. say, okay, you know what, I've got to grow. I got to build. What, what other things happened during that period of time that, that, that were really um, a pivotal point in your story? Um, man, I feel like there's, that's, uh, a lot, but, but one instance that really stood out was really just being part of this team. There was two other women I was working with, um, and they were older and, and, you know, we would have team meetings and I would always be ready just to get out of there. Like, let's hit the bullet points. Let's knock it out. Let's move on. And I I did this for like the first two months of working with them. And one day they pulled me aside and they were like, you're not here. You're not, we don't feel like you're, you want to be part of this team. We don't feel like that you actually care about, about us and what we're doing. And I'm like, and first I felt this, I think with any young man and I, I, and if your audience kind of resonates with this, this immediate reaction is to defend is to pick apart everything they said to like, you know, go list down the list of how, why they're wrong and and try to justify your actions in some kind of way. But really I kind of checked myself and I was like, I got, I'm going to be working with with them for, for a while, for for another, at least another year. I've got to find to be part of this team and actually listen to what they said, even if they were, you know, 60% right and 40% wrong. I've got to like acknowledge this, this 60% and learn from it. And it ended up being a really humbling moment, allowing, you know, that humbling moment to kind of hit me and go, you're right. I'm not being present. I'm not offering myself as a person to them. I'm really just looking this as a, a, like a task to get done. I'm not like fully engaged in what we are doing nor in their lives, you know, it's the old adage, you know, people don't, um, you know, people won't care until they know that you care about them. So I'm butchering the line, but yeah, but just that, that language of like, man, a team wants to feel not only engaged in what they're doing, but as a group of individuals that know each other and want to grow together as well as to build something. And so um, that was huge. And then just getting with, with, with Andy, I mean, he, he kind of confirmed that. And really when I was willing to be, and that's the thing is also was powerful. I, and, you know, Christian, as we talk about this, I'm, I'm remembering more now, but my, you know, those humbling moments, I, I do always feel like leaders, when you would have those humbling moments growing up, they would exploit it. It was a point then to bust you over the head where he would, I would open myself up to like, man, I'm not here and I need help. I need to help understand how to be part of this team to really contribute. Uh, I need to learn from you. And instead of beating me over the head, he, he, he saw it as like, absolutely. All right, you're ready to go. Now I'm excited because you're, you're willing now you're, you've softened up. You're willing to receive, you're willing to engage, you're willing to learn like, And so that was just really powerful and really kind of shaped my mindset on leadership too, of like, yeah, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that because see, Mm -hmm. and and I want to stop here for a second because you're, you're saying some really good solid things Mm -hmm. because men tend not to be so easy, open and Mm -hmm. more of relational. And it's tough to get into that, you know, more emotional aspect and that feeling. And uh, you just kind of share with, you know, which was part of my question was you were able to kind of explain a little bit what prevented you from being open? And then once you saw that, then you humility stuck in and you're like, okay, I want to receive, I want mm-hmm. to learn more. And so speaking of that, let's kind of dive into this. What helped you remove that pride that prevented mm-hmm. you from, from receiving and you know, experience humility where it's like, okay, it's okay to, to ask for help and receive. Um, I think it's just, it came down to, you know, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting this, you know, what you've always got, you know, like, it's just that mindset of, man, how about I do something different here? How about I think differently? I'm of a, I'm a firm believer of 
mindset, strong mindsets outlast good behaviors. I mean, I, that was my life. I think very much up to that point of like, like I said, tell me what to do. Like, I'll be a good, good little boy. Give me the list. Give me the behaviors I need to, the, the rules I need to follow. And, you know, I, I kind of stepped into like, man, I need to have just strong mindsets of someone who values freedom. That's not, that's willing to be a disruptor. I think part of being part of a really great team is you've got to somewhat burst the bubble to the point of being willing to fail and acknowledge failure, learn from it and let's go. Like, um, but I think that was kind of the, probably the genesis of it, of like the only fruit I was having from the mindset, my approach to this was pro was low, like I said, like low grade anxiety isolation, disappointment. And I kind of had the thought, why don't I just try something different here? <laughs> why don't I just value what they're saying? I don't have to hundred percent agree with it. That's what I think. I think sometimes we get in the right and wrong of like, well, not everything they said was true. So I got to, we got to like go down the, the line here and figure out what is right. It's like, no, just embrace what they are saying kind of chew up the meat and spit out the bones kind of mindset. And so that's really what it came down to of like, man, I'm here to grow and to learn. Okay. How, how do I embrace that? Um, you know, and I think sometimes like, yeah, it just takes some of those hard humbling moments where you just feel. And yeah. I mean, this is something I, I, when I'm my coaching clients and I feel is like when the light is shining on you, I mean, it's just like, boom. So some of us men, we tense up and we want to move, we want to like move around it. But sometimes you just got to let the light hit you and go, okay, what is it showing? Right. What is it revealing? Like, okay. All right. I need to work on that. I need to work on that. And I think I say, I think I started feeling that squirming in those moments. Like I started feeling myself squirm. I'm like, this is not being a man. This is being a boy. And it's time to grow up, car, right? So wow, well, wow. Well, um you're hitting you're hitting my heart. I and mean, I appreciate this because mm -hmm. it's like I think so many of us we don't like to analyze ourselves. It's one of those mm -hmm. things that's like, um, I don't want to go to the doctors because I'm afraid of what I'm gonna hear. And the whole thing mm -hmm. is it's like you've got to go to the doctor, you've got to analyze yourself. You gotta like you in your in your analogy, you gotta let the light shine on you and see, okay, what are the pimples? Where are the wrinkles? What's going on? Because mm -hmm. if you don't identify it, then you're never able to solve it. And you wonder why some individuals just, oh, I always keep losing jobs. I only have, you know, I only, you know, work for six months and I lose a job, or why am I in these like cycles of life, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, or I'm able to only build a million dollar business and I lose it or lose my spouse or whatever that, yeah. that life cycle is. It's like, there is a reason why. And like Cartwright was explained, you've got to let that hit you and come in humbly and say, okay, I, I got to figure that out. And I really just appreciate this. Now let's talk a little bit about the journey, not the destination because me, sure. and I think you're probably the same way, you know, okay, now I know, all right, I got some pimples. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do what I need to do, get rid of the pimples, right? Kind of thing, right? And these are the activities I need to do to, you know, get that result. And sometimes it's not the best approach. <laughs> sometimes it is more of, hey, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. It is not a destination. I will never achieve it. Mm -hmm. It is more of that journey. And I'd like to get your perspective on that in regard to like your own story, but also some of the clients that you've worked with and helping them understand and having that right expectation. Yeah. Is this something you have to do and embrace for the rest of your life? Yeah. I mean, I think the, the first thing I thought of Christian is really uh, just the practice of deflection. We love to deflect to other people, you know, or circumstances of why we are where we are. And, you know, something I'd go with my clients that I, you know, I had to learn. It's like, I, like I talk about that squirming. That's one of the things we do when we squirm is we want to deflect off into something else. Um, the reason why I did that was because of you or this experience or that circumstance. And instead, like, like, like you have to, at the end of the day, start with you. That's, that's the journey that I had to start going on. Um, really in, and like, I like owning my life, it's mine. So I got to own it. Start with me like that mindset, start with me. So, I mean, for like my clients, I'm really like, start with you. What does this look like if you started 
start this mind, this problem, this issue, and you start with you. How do I help you own it? Um, you know, with my story, yeah, I'm sitting there trying to think. I mean, really, it was, you know, don't ever take anything with face value. I mean, um, really start take learning to take massive action and be okay with it. Um, starting with me is like, yeah, like I, I keep saying going back to this, but it's so true. It's like failure. Like, okay, am I willing to fail here? And if I am, okay, what does that look like? So like taking, taking, learning to take risks, learning to take massive action, learning to pursue things wholeheartedly and not half-heartedly. Um, you know, for me, that was like, you know, I was living in California. I started feeling a level of comfort being in this kind of niche community out there. And, um, and it, I just felt this like calling to almost like the hero's journey. You know, if you, anyone understands Joseph Campbell um, type stuff, but it was like returning back to my hometown, which is Birmingham, Alabama. And I just remember thinking that's the last place I wanted to go after leaving California. And I'm like, but I felt this like men in, in this city kind of need a similar experience to what I have been like stepped into. And that was the calling like I felt and how do I, you know, how do I do that? And I was willing just to step into it and to fail and to be rejected. And for people to kind of go, why are you doing that? You know, why, you know, and I think that was the worst thing I, I wanted to hear was like, is for people to kind of be confused or to get a negative response to me becoming a coach, a life coach, you know, just even that word, I'm like, Ugh life coach but i'm like that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to get with men in groups and one-on-one -on -one and really help them to find their purpose that is uniquely them and but really yeah when i just stepping into it and realizing that i wouldn't be a hundred percent received positively and that's that was hard for me because i am a people pleaser i am a you know homebody i guess kind of like don't like change don't you know really like i'm a pretty laid back guy but i had to embrace this like you know, negativity, embrace some level and actually keep going forward and learn from it and say, no, this is, this is what I want to do. And I'm going to go do it. So what helped you go through that? Was that just facilitating the right people around you? Or was it just more of a in deep seed of, of motivation and inspiration and drive? Or what do you think kind of drove you to keep going that path? I, I think really just my own story my own you know revelation because i mean it wasn't easy you know I, I would you know if someone is in my shoes i would say yeah get more great people around you get a mentor people you meet with regularly scheduled i didn't necessarily have i had community but more than anything it was just i knew the way i felt and i knew there were men who felt like me that restless discontent but even to the like the worst is hopeless and that's what I wanted to engage men, you know, in hope to the point where like, I like, can understand their own story. So how do I do that? And that was kind of my guiding, like, how do I, you know, I didn't under, articulate exactly what that looked like, but I knew that's what I wanted to do. And that was kind of my driver of like, I knew I was here and I had stepped into something that I wanted men to step into. And that's kind of what has been my driver as I've been figuring out what that looks like you know, beyond just the broad, you know, coaching, mentoring, uh, and leading groups, you know, so. Well, I, I want to, and I appreciate you sharing this because one of the things I want to pull back around a little bit and emphasize is because see, like you and I understand you, you cannot really coach or mentor someone that does not want to be coached or mentored. Right. And the thing is in order for them to be open to it, just like you and I were just talking, it's about, well, your, your, your face is in crap, right? Yeah. And it's a, covered with crap, a whole bunch of poop. Are you, do you want help now? Yes, I do, right? <laughs> and it's just humility. And yeah. um, what's, what's interesting is I, I like to just kind of, if you would, right, just kind of share with me a few, few clients, you know, stories, you don't have to mention the names, but a few client stories, if you will, of, you know, being able to see this, 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 this depress, whatever the situation was, to then all of a sudden this, this beautiful, um, you know, forged man, if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, th I think, you know, what's interesting is uh, uh, that word forged is just like you said, it's a continual thing. Like we are being forged and there's really two meanings to the word forged. 
is one is like the one I'm sure most people is like the hammering, the molding, the shaping by heat and fire. And like, that's like, we need to embrace that type of lifestyle that we are the unfinished mindset as one of my favorite authors likes to, you know, um, communicate. But then there's the other definition, which is um, like a forged check, meaning to deceive for the intent to, to, to fraud. Right. And I think as some men, as I'm finding like your, like your point is there's still like, like I need help, but I'm still want to put up that mask to fake it. I just want you just to adjust some behaviors. I don't really want you to look in under the hood or anything like that. So like your point, we need that humbling moment to hit us in the face. And, you know, I think a lot like your story, I mean, there's a couple of guys I meet with that, you know, I mean, one, it wasn't his, actually wasn't his wife. It was uh, his boss called him and said, uh, um, hey, I'm going to have to fire you uh, because you are working on, you were on your work computer looking at pornography. And like that low moment of like, oh, wow. I feel like a kid, like you feel like a kid, you feel like a child. And like that willingness to then step into of like, I need to grow up. I need to learn. I need to um, engage with my marriage. I need to come, figure out, like, not just kind of move around, have this passive approach to life and actually like engage with my story and what I'm doing. And, and, you know, I would say that that's one where it was, it was, that was actually fairly recent and he, and he is growing, he's willing to change where he wasn't before. Um, him and his wife are becoming closer. Um, you know, and it's funny cause it's like a lot of the guys I meet with, they would never, you know, work in a therapist office and they, you could just feel the discomfort of just walking to a therapist office for the first time, <laughs> even though what I do is very different from what a therapist does. But, um, a couple of stories I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, I mean, one guy, like, uh, one of my favorite clients, he's just in it every day of, trying to leave he's a he's a manager at a um a healthcare company and he's just deals with difficult people every day and trying to bring them on board and get them to see the collective and the growth and sometimes he just needs that place of sanity where he can kind of just like okay i can't find solutions in in the midst of my world where i'm just constantly putting out fires and trying to get people to stop reacting constantly and see the big picture. And, and, and so we talk through solutions of how to, you know, how he wants to look at it, what mindset to approach, how to really talk through conflict, how to really solve problems, what does, and really activate what's already in him. I think at the end of the day, there's always deep down, there's some greatness in every one of us if we're willing to access it. And that's what's beautiful about my job is I don't really, uh, you know, like I'm not this expert elite, you know, I am, I just pull out what's already there. I feel like I'm just kind of like, I guess like the Michelangelo sculpture of David, right? He just took everything away that wasn't David. I think it was the quote he said, you know, like that's what I'm trying to do. And so it's fun. Yeah. To kind of just kind of when people, like you said, are willing to dive in, like hold up the mirror in a sense, have the light shine on them. And they're like, all right, let's, I want, I don't want to be the same. And so it's been fun. Yeah. Anyway. So I think that was a couple. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. No, no. I was just going to say, I, I really appreciate that, that story. And it really just emphasizing a few of your clients that you've worked with just to see it, like you said. And, and I love the, the two explanation of forge. And I never thought of the forge regarding like, you know, it is, it is a forge check kind of concept where, Hey, um, I'm presenting myself but I also still have a mask on. And I, I just tell you very personally, that is something that I did. I remember numerous times that I would go to counseling, right? And say, hey, I'm going to counseling. But did yeah. I, did I uh, direct them? Did I, you know, kind of talk about something else? Did I, whatever? Yeah, of course I certainly did because I didn't want to actually get to the root cause of it. And then obviously there was a whole bunch of crap that happened. And this is not about me, but anyways, I just want to share with you. Uh, but that allowed me to have enough poop on my face that I said, I want to change. I want to embrace. I want to produce something. And I guess my, my question, Cartwright, is, you know, I, I'm just thinking about our listener that's like, okay, I know that I need to change. 
I know it's a little afraid. I know I'm a, a little afraid of it, right? Mm-hmm. What's the, because the, what are lies that they should be aware of that are maybe are pre- mm-hmm. you know, preventing them from reaching out? And mm-hmm. two, when they do reach out to fully say, you know what, this is everything. This is everything you're seeing me for, for, for naked and afraid that I am. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I would say, you know, the first one, like you said, I mean, it's like, you're not alone. Like this is, you're not the only one dealing with this. And it, it's like, it, for some reason, I, don't, I think as a man, especially like we can't ask for help. There's some lie deep within us that like, I have to be self-reliant. Like there's something like what I'm dealing with, I have to figure it out or I am weak or I'm not a man or, and so if somehow if you could push back that and embrace some level, that humility and go, there are people that truly just want to help me. Like that's their job. They just, they're a innocent bystander. They're not a friend. They're, they're, uh, they have no dog in the fight either way that they, they literally just are here to help me get out of this and f- figure something out. And so like, just, just kind of that lie in itself of like, yeah, like it's okay. Like I could go talk to somebody about my problems and I'm not the only one dealing with this. Like there's a reason why right now the mental health industry is thriving, <laughs> you know, especially post COVID world, like it is, it is just like the, I mean, um, I know the counselors that I work with, like they have no openings because like, because people are wanting answers, they're wanting solutions. And the more you're willing to engage and open that door to let somebody into your world and push past, like put that pride down and go, okay, here's me. And then, so the next thing, as I would say from that is don't feel like you got to over explain it. I think there's a lot of people coming to my office and, and people I've met with, and it's just like, let me give you the caveat to everything I'm saying. Let me over explain everything that's going on. So I don't look as bad to you when really it's like, what, you know, like sit back, you know, present what what you're dealing with, what you want to grow in what you want to know and just let it be and allow someone to speak into you. You know, don't feel like you have to over explain yourself. Um, you know, constantly I have to just kind of stop people, you know, some people I have to interrupt and, you know, um, you know, and just kind of like, yeah, it's, 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 you know, one, it's, it's one stepping into that place, meeting with somebody, but then all of a sudden be receptive to what they have to say and not feel like there's judgment. I think that's, we're all very afraid of being judged, looked down, criticized, picked apart. And, you know, I think a lot of people are really good at, at, <laughs> at allowing of creating a safe place where they, they're trying to really build trust with you for you to share and then communicate in a way that you want, that you want, like you will leave with solutions that you will grow, that you will know yourself better. So to kind of like put down that lie, that narrative that this, this person is out to get me, whoever it is, I don't care if they're a counselor or coach or whatever. And so I think, yeah, those kind of three things of, you know, just be willing to, yeah, I feel like you're not the only one, you know, don't feel like you have to explain yourself and don't worry, like the whole judgment thing. Yeah, just kind of leave that behind. So I love that, man. I love that insight. I mean, just mm-hmm. I really appreciate the time that we've had today and just explaining, you know, really the the mm-hmm. in-depth of what a lot of men are struggling with. And obviously a lot of businesses and business owners and 20, 30 year olds, like you said, post COVID. And, you know, um, Cartwright, how can our audience reach out to you, consume your content, be around in your community, man? Yeah, I mean, Men Are Forged podcast. I mean, I'm on Apple, Spotify, and even iHeartRadio. So f- feel free to just check out one of those stories. I mean, that's what I love, like just life stories of people that have gone before us and they've they've done it. They've, they've had the humbling moments. They've taken massive action. They've built strong mindsets. They've learn and, and lived out their, you know, they're pursuing their purpose in life. And so I really like love just kind of get, hearing men's stories. So that's kind of on the podcast. Um, and, and then I would is go to menaforge.com 
um, especially mentorforge.com backslash define your purpose is I just, I created a four session coaching program to really help you discover and define your purpose in life. And we kind of hit on the four big topics of what that is. Um, and I do that virtually as well. So, you know, um, so that's, that's a great place to just find me more of my content as well as just my services of purpose driven coaching. And that's kind of my heart and my desire to, to help men do so. Awesome. And guys, those links will be in the description below. So make sure, you know, if you're, if you're struggling or whatever that may be, or you feel like you're in a circular one position or life, um, then make sure you reach out. I, again, like I said, the whole the whole point of this conversation is to say, hey, it is okay. And having that conversation say, hey, if you you keep doing what you're doing, you'll you keep getting the same results, right? And obviously you want something different. And that's why Cartwright and, and, uh, um, and I had this conversation. And again, I just appreciate the men's value that you brought in today. Uh, before we let you go, is there any, uh, any last words of wisdom that you would like to share with our audience? Oh man, dang, put me on the spot. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess the, the last thing is I say is if, you know, if, if you want something different, you got to do something different. You can't keep doing the same thing. Um, and that's kind of been a lot of my life. And so, yeah, just start going for it, you know, grab courage and just keep going. Grab courage and keep going. I love that guys. That is Cartwright Morris. And that is journey with Christian Evans podcast until next time. Remember be uncommon if you can. Yo, this is Christian D. Evans, Journey with Christian D. Evans podcast. We thank you so much for listening to this amazing episode. If you feel and you know that this was valuable to you, please show some love to our amazing guest by liking this, by commenting on this, by making sure that you do a nice five-star review and just show some love to our guest. That'd be really awesome. Also, make sure you share this with a friend, a family, a colleague, someone that you believe would bring value to their life right now. Uh, and guys, we just want to say thank you again for just being part of our community. If you want to have more resources, don't be afraid. Go to christiandevans.com. You can actually schedule a phone call with me or you can send me an email at christian.evans at beuncommonifyoucan.com. That's christian.evans at beuncommonifyoucan.com. Always love to hear some feedback and let me know what is the number one or two things that you are struggling in your business and your life and we'll make sure we have those conversations guys that is journey with christian davis podcast and until next time remember be uncommon if you can cheers